Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife, Melissa, and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald, and this is Curiosity Inc. Hey everyone, well I'm back at the general store today. Uh, just about, well, less than 10 days, about eight days or so until I officially get the place. Again, the owners have been kind enough to let us do a little work inside. I can see they got the uh, asbestos tents are all removed off of the addition. Okay, let's see what the back addition looks like now that they've gone through and gotten rid of the asbestos out of here. I've never actually seen it fully emptied out yet. Wooden steps. A little bit musty, but it's sure a heck of a lot better. See, they've got some spots marked off on the floor. It's nice to see the roof and get an idea of its condition. It doesn't look too bad. I mean, really, I know there's some planking out there that's no good that we'll have to take out, but it doesn't look that bad. It's not good when you can see the daylight through it though, so we're probably gonna get lots of water in here until I get that roof on. It's the original outside of the building with the siding. Oh, it looks like they had, yeah, they had like, you can see where the old addition was. And that's just thin drywall. All it's gonna to take to put that back to being a door and be cutting that out. The concept with this backspace is that I want to leave the ceiling open beam so it feels like you're in a shop. I want to do the walls, well, very similar to what we have on the back here with the vertical sort of slatted wood. I'm going to try and replicate that throughout. Now, uh, the one challenge I do have is that to do the ceiling properly, uh, you have to insulate, obviously, otherwise the heat would just go straight out. I'm going to hire a professional roofing company to do the roof on this place because I don't want to have any water issues. I want to make sure there's a warranty attached to it and just make sure that you know the investment is protected here. Um, I had a good conversation with them. They said because the space is very small, there should not be any challenge with insulating directly up on the roof um, because there wouldn't be enough uh, heat or buildup to create any challenges with airflow. So I think we're gonna be okay for the uh, aesthetic that I'm looking for in this space. Next is gonna be the demo and starting to tear all this out, but that's gonna happen uh, in a future episode just kind of doing the planning and I'm waiting for Josh to show up today so we can work on the shelves. So I'm going to get inside the building, unlock it, and I've got some bins to clean out. And there seems to be this chipboard sort of subfloor. And as I'm giving a little poke here to see what's underneath, it looks like there's a wooden subfloor under here, a wooden plank floor. I don't know if it's hardwood floors, but you know, it uh, looks kind of decent underneath all that. So we'll see if we can get back to that because that would be a nice, uh, a nice surface for the floor. What, it, are you asking if the inside is poisonous? Yeah. No. I guess you guys just came out. Uh, yeah, but three of us went in. <laughs> yeah, come have a look inside. We were trying to figure out what to do with uh, windows and doors and that kind of stuff in here. Um, careful of the floor. I was kind of peeling back this chipboard stuff. There's wood plank underneath, but there's holes there. Mm. There's a hole there and a hole there. So this is like oh. a bad plank. Okay. So we got some rod on the bottom. Oh, that should be. Fun. And then up around the door. That I don't need that door there anymore. That that can go away. Oh, well, that's not too big of a deal. We can shore this up and then replace that. Um, this I want to try and open up this room as much as possible so it's one big space. So I might have to put like a pillar, like um, a telescopic post or something in the middle. Mm, no. You don't think so? No. This is not a load bearing wall because most of this is not even touching the. Oh, so that's just... So your load bearing, because these are trusses, yeah. not rafters. The load is like, it pushes on each other, like the trusses, they push, either end pushes on each other. So the load bearing walls are just these two walls. This so, is fine, we can take this out. So like a garage, basically. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay, well the, the plan here is to make this one big open space. Okay. Yeah, easy. And I want to leave the ceiling open like this. And I talked to a roofing company. They said because it's such a small space, it won't actually do any kind of damage to the shingles if we insulate like we did at the Potter's house and then plank oh, okay. it. He said, you know, for the space you have and the amount of times that your door is going to be opening and closing, 
the flow of air is going to keep it out. You're, he said two-story home, yeah, you might have some trouble. This place, not so bad. Okay. That used to be a furnace there. Ah, ah, I see. And I'll probably have to, I don't know how I'm going to heat it in here yet. That's going to be another issue. You know, where I was looking online to see if maybe they made something that looked like a pot belly stove, but was actually like an electric furnace. That would be cool. So I might just put like an electric heater that looks like an antique stove in here. Right. Or isn't there those like fireplace looking things? Yeah. There, I don't think they put up much heat though. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. Yeah. Double. So this is going to get covered up anyways. It doesn't matter. We'll put in a, a post, uh, not a post. Well, essentially we'll be making a post and we'll just lamb it up. Cut all that out, take that out. Um, all this rot's gotta go. Yeah. See this? Mm. That, that's good, that's still good. No, that's not good. What makes you think that? <laughs> uh, this here is probably not good, so we'll have to do something there. But, yeah, that's not good either. So, mm. This is not a huge deal. Of course, you don't want to leave it like this. But no, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Hey, at least the plus side is that when we look around the room, there's only the one corner. All the, all the rest of this stuff is pretty clean wood. Like, it doesn't look that bad. It's just over by the door here. Yuck. So I'm outside bringing the vacuum cleaner in to get ready to clean out some of the old bins over there. And what do I see? One of the neighbors in the area has brought me this. It's a little picture that they had found at an architectural clearing center, and it's all old general stores. So they thought, well, maybe that would be a nice thing to put in the store. So if, um, I think it will. I think we'll find a room for it somewhere. It's a very thoughtful gift, a very nice gesture, and nice to know that the neighbors are certainly on board with the idea of having a little general store back in the neighborhood. I talked to the property manager of this apartment building a few weeks ago. They said they were gonna move their gutters so they didn't drain right at my building. I can see that's not happened yet. I have to give them another call, see what their time frame is for that, because that is creating some major flooding issues for us in the basement. The other issue I have had with these shelves is that they're covering the windows. Now, I need the shelving space. There's no question about that. My store is full right now and every square inch matters. But I think there might be a way to, well, let me tell you what my plan is and then hopefully it'll make sense. Here's what I'm thinking. We're gonna move this cabinet all the way down. I measured, it looks like there should be enough room so it won't block that window. That way, this cabinet stays intact. I don't have to cut or do anything. I'm gonna build a little platform or get Josh and Dakota to build it up about that much so that it goes right up to the ceiling. So it'll be floor to ceiling shelves right at the front of the store. That way they can mount them directly to the wall and it'll be nice and sturdy. So that's number one. That should be really easy, problem solved. Issue number two is this side. As you can see, there's another window here. Now this will be a little bit trickier. Like the other one, um, we're gonna build a little platform, raise it up to the ceiling. But in this case, I want to actually um, cut out a design, pocket out where the window is gonna be, maybe with an arch or something. And I'll see if I can't do glass shelving so that I can put products on there that will, maybe there'll be glasses or bottles or things of that nature so that uh, light can pass through and I'll still have the shelves uh, and they'll be usable. That's gonna be a little bit of work for Josh and Dakota on this side. That one, when they get here, we'll just shove it down, get them to build it up. That one will be done. And then we'll just be worrying about this side over here. I'm a little bit uh, bummed out to have to cut it because those planks aren't short. They're not like nailed in in between. They actually are full length planks all the way down. And um, it's kind of a shame to cut them up, but we have to make it look like it works in this space. And I don't really want to block the windows if I have to, uh, you know, um, display things on there, that's fine. And there's no issue with egress because there are plenty of accesses in and out. Somebody was saying online, well, maybe you can't block them because of fire access. Well, the windows don't even have to open and close. They're not required to open and close. We have a door there. We've got a door there. There's gonna be a door back there. So we're gonna be well covered for entrances and exits in the building. Um, but I do want it to look proper and look nice. So that's gonna be what I'm gonna have the guys work on today. Okay, so we can't slide it down apparently because it's gonna be sticking out over the window too far. I miscalculated, I didn't have a measuring tape. He came prepared with the measuring tape. I was just like- Paces. Pacing, you know, like, <laughs> well, it kinda looks like it might. So we can leave it where it is, which is fine because you've already cut the vent hole. Um, so what we need you to do, I guess, is figure out how do we build a platform for this or something to raise it up all the way to the ceiling and then we can cut out the spot where the window is gonna be. Mm -hmm. Could that work? 
Because you could cut this out on the spot, right? Or do you want? Would you want to take it down? I guess we'll have to take it down. I would take it down just because then it could be more. Okay, so precise. today, do you want to take this thing down, measure, and then figure out what you got to do? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, we'll right. do that. Well, the benefit of the, these cupboards being down at the end, you have the hiccups over there? Yeah. What? Do you need me to scare you? How do you scare somebody who thrives on horror films? <laughs> <laughs> Show you like a picture of like a cute little bunny and you'll be like, ah! No, I'm not, I'm not used to this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, customers will be able to reach in and grab stuff out of there, which is perfect. Cause I can, that's what it's meant for. It'll okay. be good. Go. It's pretty sturdy, I think. It is pretty sturdy actually. Okay, go all the way up to that crown. Crown. All the way up to the top. Okay, so I'm at, let's say, 156 and three quarter. So that'll be 153 and three quarter will be our measurement to do exactly that. But we should make so while the guys are inside working on the shelf, I ran out and I picked up my zoning sign. Now that's probably one of the most important things I could have done today. Um, according to zoning bylaws, I have to have this thing up so people can read it and see what's happening in the neighborhood. It's a big, big gamble uh, to purchase a building and not have the correct zoning in place. However, I checked with the community league, I checked with the, the city, the offices, nobody seems to think there's gonna be any kind of challenge. So I feel like I did my due diligence. I feel like it was just zoned incorrectly because clearly it's not an apartment building, that's what it was zoned as before. Uh, so we're gonna put it back to its proper zoning and um, fingers crossed everything goes well. But it's up and in place. I'm gonna go see how the guys are doing inside. You're like a human ant, just moving giant things all on your own. Uh, so we opted to shorten this shelf down a little bit and it's going to go all the way down to the end. We moved the counter down that way. So they've just been uh, busy notching and getting ready to use the original hardware so that it doesn't look like we've just stuck a bunch of brand new plywood or anything on the end. So it's going to look pretty good. I'm headed to Home Depot right now to see if I can find a couple extra pieces of trim like this. It's 100 years old, don't know if they're going to have something similar or not do my best to try and match it up. What I need is crown molding. It's the type that basically goes not straight up and down. It goes on an angle. Um, you can see how the top part's flat. So it's crown molding. They sell some here in a fiber board, which we could probably paint to match. It's about a couple bucks a foot. I mean, worst comes to worst, that stuff could work. Um, I don't know if they have it in a wood. Oak would be nice. Cove, it's a little bit you know, about twice as expensive. But I might have to get Josh to come back and see, I don't have a truck with me, so buying 20 feet of this stuff will not work in my little car today. But I'm optimistic at least that they should have something amongst all this trim that will probably do the trick. So this is what's happening right now. We've propped it up to the ceiling so that it runs along the top edge there. That way it clears the window. Hi everyone and welcome to today's episode. I am in a lovely home of a lovely lady named Janine who's showing me around. She's going to be moving from her property and uh, as it happens when you go to, to homes and sometimes estates, people are downsizing. I've come here to look at a very few specific things. We've started putting some stuff together, which I'll show you in a second, but I'm amazed by the quantity of small cool items, which I'll show you in a second. Well, Janine, thank you so much for having me by this morning. We got a nice, lovely and beautiful day. Um, so we are looking around at some of your treasures, but I noticed in this showcase, this appears to be a lot of miniature. Would this be considered dollhouse miniatures? It looks much more detailed than just for a regular dollhouse though. Well, the, this stuff isn't for children. It's more for adults. Right, and there's collector clubs, are there not? That, yeah, that... And it's called M.A.E. in Edmonton, Miniature Enthusiasts of Edmonton. And have you been a member of their club for a while now? I didn't join last year because you uh, renew yearly because I had a lot of health issues, but I think I'll be back this year. So you not just, I mean, you collect this, but you also make a lot, you said too. 
or I refinish like this. I yeah. I don't have a picture, but one of the girls at the club does. And we went to a place called, uh, Saint, it was in St. Albert. And you refinished all the wood on it? And yeah. Did you do the sort of the wallpapering design on the back of the yeah. cabinet? Well, it's just lovely. And I mean, look at the detail on the little plates and dishes. If you didn't know that I was pointing this at a miniature, you'd think that's the real thing. And I guess that's the whole idea with miniatures is to kind of, kind of fool your senses into thinking you're looking at something. Now, I see you've got a little friend down here yes. who's holding his paper. My daughter and son-in-law and grandkids brought that back from their holidays last year. Well, it's going to be me in a few years, I'm sure. <laughs> I'll just start growing the mustache out now. So of all the furniture and all the things we're looking at, what is sort of your favorite item to make or collect? Well, I made that vase of flowers back there. It's a lady from Saskatchewan that came to one of our... So you made that, did you, you make the flowers on your own? Yeah. So what do you make them out of? Those ones are all paper. Out of, how long would it take you to make uh, a vase like that full of flowers? Well, we spent a good day on it at the, at the uh, what was that called? It's quite often the club will bring somebody in to do something like that. So you spend a day learning how to do it. Now you've built many other little miniatures too. Oh, there's the liquor cabinet, it looks like. Ready for a party? This one? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, I brought that back from the trip to Europe, actually. And you said the scale on these miniatures is mainly one <laughs> scale, right? 148? Well, one to 12. One to 12, I'm sorry. I guess 148 would be quite small. And I painted that. So you painted this, this you, you reupholstered that little chair. And that takes skill, just as much skill as it would a regular upholster to be able to stretch it and, and attach it and make sure it all looks nice. You did a great job. Have you ever thought about moving into full-size furniture? Because it looks like That's you got a talent for it. Did you start with a upholster? <laughs> well, just my, for my own stuff. Ah. And this this one is one of my favorites. Isn't that nice? That was, again, at the same place I painted that one. Well, now, aside from the miniatures, we put a few things aside in the basement here that... Um, we look, we're going to chat about one is a candlestick phone, which has been turned into a lamp, but it's still, what's nice about it is it's candlestick, but it has a rotary on it, which is a nice transitional piece. Cause later on, of course, um, they would just go to the built-in handset and you wouldn't see the rotary with the candlestick style. Um, so that's kind of cool. Somebody's turned into a lamp, but still interesting. This is the piece I kind of came out for. Now my grandfather, great grandfather used to operate steam tractors in, uh, in Canada here, clearing land for the railways. And that is the headlight off of, uh, was it your family's steam tractor? My grandfather's. Your grandfather. So I wonder if they knew each other. You never know. There couldn't have been too many people working steam tractors back then. And it's been retinned. Um, lovely piece though. And of course, um, a ship's compass and some Crocs, all sorts of neat things. But we're gonna to go to the garage, I think, and have a look and see if there's anything else out there. But already we're definitely finding some, not miniatures, but some one-to-one -one scale items that I think will work nicely in the, sh in the store. And that's costume jewelry with Sherman. I always like these little, um, well, I'm not meaning to say that because they're little, but these are, um, um, you know, postcards. Sometimes they're from uh, circuses or, uh, they could be from things that were considered oddities at the time. In that case, it was a family of people who uh, were of shorter stature, you would say, and uh, they made a little card about it. So stuff like that, I'm always on the hunt for. So, well, let's go out and have a look-see. So in the garage, we've got this lovely old cabinet. It's probably close to 100 years old, I'd say, judging by the hardware. Now you're using it for garden stuff, which is just fine. It can be used for whatever. And this is the, the type of door that we replicated at the Potter's House, of course. Something like this could possibly have a home in the new general store. I just have to figure out where. So, um, of course, with your permission, I'll call, contact you later on and we'll see if maybe we can come up with uh, a place for this. And I'd have to bring a bigger vehicle too, but that's a lovely piece. Thank you for showing me. It'd be easy to price this one because it was at a yard sale before. So that's got a $10 price on it. It was actually very fair. That's an antique cobbler's tool that you put your shoe on and you can hammer your new sole on. But right now it ain't got no sole. There's no shoe on it. But this is my little variety of things I put together. So now, hopefully we can chat about price and we can bring these back. Well, a successful trip. I ended up with a lot of interesting items. I got to see a very cool collection of miniatures. Um, she's invited me over with Abigail because as you guys might know, Abigail got an old Lundby dollhouse. So maybe we'll be able to pick out some furniture for Abigail for her dollhouse in the future. Maybe a future episode, you never know.
folks at Goodwill were nice enough to set aside a massive pail of pennies for me, which I'm gonna try and use for a craft project at the shop. But while I'm here, I'm gonna have a look around and see if there's any treasures that I can find and possibly bring back because you can't come to a thrift shop without seeing what they got. One thing that's decent quality that you find at thrift stores all the time is leaded glass. Now, crystal and crystal, uh, cut crystal like this, is really expensive if you want to buy it brand new, but of course it's not really in fashion. So even this piece, which is a nice Polish vase, uh, what do they have on it? 25 bucks. I imagine this store that'd probably be closer to 80 or so. So some good discounts on that if that's what you're into. Lots of little knickknacks. Even a super random oil painting of a guy who looks like he's a scientist with the microscope. That is actually a real oil painting. I mean, I'm not sure why you would want that somewhat terrifying. Maybe that's why I need to have it. It's only 10 bucks. That seems like a heck of a steal. I also see some baseball cards from the looks of things, and these are early enough, 1981, that these were not hugely collectible. At, you know, they haven't been overly mass produced. Uh, around 1988 or so is when they really started to make tons of stuff and, you know, like these 1990s upper deck, not as collectible, but these, I'm gonna pick them up and it's only 10 bucks for all of them. What a bargain. And the painting, which I at first thought was kind of terrifying, is actually a portrait that was commissioned in about 1927 of Dr. Bocard, who invented, I think it was Lacteal, um, a medicine, and had all kinds of Art Deco images in and around his house. Uh, this is a replica of it, but it is a real oil painting, and someone, well, if you're into Art Deco and a doctor, or really like this guy, that'd be a painting for you, but hey, 10 bucks. Couldn't pay me 10 bucks to paint something like that. Back at the store, and last week, Josh, Dakota, and I were able to get the shelves more or less in place. And yes, for all those asking, we're not blocking the windows anymore. There's a new plan. I'm open to suggestions, especially when they're good ones. I will figure out the shelving situation some other way, but yes, it will be nice to be able to open and close the windows. But uh, today, I'm gonna work on painting the inside of the ceiling. I've decided against the tin roof in here, even though that would make it look pretty cool. It's really expensive. It would be like uh, 3,000 bucks to do a tin roof in here. Um, maybe down the road, but uh, right now I need to spend that kind of money on renovating the back half of the building. So I'm saving my bucks. We're just gonna do a, a paint job. I've picked sort of a nice, uh, I think it's called like ivory green or something along those lines. Uh, anyway, it's a nice heritage color and I think it'll set off the wood tones and earth tones in here and give us a little bit of richness to the roof. So I'm gonna start edging the ceiling before the guys get here because um, they'll be working on that side where the shelves are and I've gotta get that done before they get here. I'm starting to get some of the edging done near the shelves because pretty soon the guy's going to be here. So I've got to get all this done going all the way back so that I can roll, um, but I don't want to get in their way. So I'm just going to do this side first and I'm going to do all around the fixtures and then I can roll out the ceiling. And uh, I'm pretty sure that'll give us a nice contrast, a nice feature in the ceiling. another 800 square feet to go of a truck with no exhaust can it be it is it's Josh and Dakota they made it got you some wood and stuff nice you guys ready to get these shelves done today oh they'll be done today I like his confidence. What about your confidence? You feeling oh, yeah. confident? Well, it's gonna be good. Are you full of strawberry, blueberry? What is that? It is blueberry palm. Mmm. Mm. Looks good. Okay, I'm just painting inside. I have been busy painting the ceiling above my head here. This lovely sort of uh, green, and I thought it was, it's ivy green, obviously not ivory. I don't know what I was thinking, it's ivy green. Uh, Josh and Dakota are behind me working on the shelf, and as you can see, not a screen the window. Um, they're starting it up, staining it, and getting it ready and in place. How's it going over there? Small though. Uh, it's a little bit too short on that side. That's okay. You seem like a guy who knows how to fix a problem like that. So what's your solution? I'm just gonna cut, recut, cut it. Oh, that's how you know it's a good glue job. It didn't break. He's about uh, an eighth, a little heavier than an eighth bigger. And it'll be fine. So I'll get new ones. And I see you've cut out the space for the shelf. And I'm going to get on, after I'm done edging the uh, the rest of the ceiling up there, I'm going to come down here and start getting the uh, shelf 
I guess, brackets or spots in place. So I'll get on that in a couple minutes. So this, as per Josh's suggestion, will become a watch showcase. Um, I thought it would look good in that little space there. What do you guys think? I think it'll look great. Yeah, it'll look like it's meant to be there because we had that weird opening anyway. Yeah. Yeah, that was an awkward opening, so this is a good idea. Well, and the thought is that I could also put my other clocks and stuff on the shelves around it so I could do um, like a theme. A time, a theme of time. A theme of time. Small, my Big Mac is. I don't, I don't know if that, that translates on camera, but this is freaking tiny. Let's see. It looks huge now that I held the camera up to it. But that is probably, Josh is so concerned with this, he's vlogging and I'm vlogging. I mean, well, this is like life creating art. Look, watch my channel and then watch his and you'll see them both. But that is one, t I will agree, that's a tiny McDonald's hamburger. This is like a slider. This is so small. Well, let's see the patty. Well, right. Dakota, you gotta take that top off, take the lid off. Oh, there's a chunk missing out of it. Now you're mostly just bun here at this point. That's a lot of carbs. You're, you're eating three layers of bread with like a, a schmear of hamburger in there. But didn't you leave that in the car like all day? It was in the car all day. Maybe it shrunk. Shrinkage. Yeah, you gotta allow for shrinkage. Top part of the shelves are going in. We held those up earlier. Josh and Dakota got them screwed into the wall. Now it's just the final parts on the bottom. You can see the guy's got the um, case in place, not meaning to rhyme in time, but I am. Yeah. Now I got to start putting the shelves in. The bottom parts are stained. And uh, we left this really wide, really open here. It's about 24 inches probably from that shelf. Reason being that if I get slot machines or big items, I can put them on that shelf. It's gonna be nice and sturdy and uh, it's gonna look fantastic. So I have a controversial question for you. What do you think of Bob Ross's paintings? <laughs> I think he's awesome. So Josh does a lot of portraits of people. Have you ever done a Bob Ross painting? Like a, a portrait of Bob Ross with that big afro and everything? No. Because of the sheer amount of paint you'd need to fill out the afro and the beard, I <laughs> uh, pretty much grew up watching. We were talking about art earlier. Josh is a fan of, is it Godard? Goddard? Goddard. The olive guy. The guy, it's, everything's an olive. Like he's, they're on top of a martini glass and then he's driving a NASCAR. That olive can do everything. Bob Ross, I think wonderful human being. And I think that's the true appeal of Bob Ross is the person he is as opposed to the art that he does. Yeah. I still think it'd be cool if he did a Bob Ross portrait though. Okay, so this is the general idea here. I've got the little brackets in place on both sides. They're all nailed in. Then I just have to put a little extra stain up there. And then uh, the shelves will be able to rest on top. I'm gonna leave them loose, not nail them in so that I can uh, take them off and move the shelves around later. There we go. And one cabinet that was bound for the trash has been recycled into a showcase that will have all sorts of wonderful, interesting watches inside of it. Great use of a neat old item and uh, practical too. Okay, I am starting to get the stain. Well, I'm going to be putting a fresh coat of stain on the top surfaces of the old cabinet here. Just to tie it all together, we've got the antique uh, wall clock turned into a shelf. And the guys are down at the other end. Dakota is selecting Karma Police to play next. Mm -hmm. A little radio head action. While Josh is working on, you're getting the legs on. The legs. The support. The support system? Yeah, support so. System. The whole idea was to make it look like the shelving system had been here pretty much forever. Um, and it's, I think it's, we're starting to get that effect. I mean, it would have been a custom built thing originally. The one thing we have to do, and I don't know if we'll get it done today, is continue the wood along the top and connect it. And then uh, find some crown molding to go all the way along. So I just got a call from Josh. He's out at uh, the hardware store at Home Depot looking for the crown molding for the top. He found some, but it's uh, quite a bit more expensive than if you just went to a shop that does nothing but trim. Challenge is, um, okay, one, the, the bonus of getting it uh, later would be it's cheaper. The downside is that we don't get it finished tonight and I have to make a tough choice and that's to spend more money on the materials 
because I have to factor in um, that these guys are already set up with all their tools, all the equipment is here right now, and there's a certain amount of uh, labor that goes into getting this all set up. So it's gonna end up being less expensive in the long run or equal to if we just pay the difference and get it done tonight. Um, so he's picking that stuff up, gonna come back, but you can see the shelves are coming all nicely. Uh, I've been working on staining and uh, Dakota's back there hammering away. We have decided to use the space under the window, uh, recycling it, we'll stain that to match, but recycling some of the old wood and turning this into a desk area. So I'll move the cash wrap over in this area and then I can have an office chair there and do some little paperwork and stuff. So making practical use out of our space. Time to start cleaning up. I'm gonna gather all the scrap wood like a little squirrel, or I guess a beaver. Squirrels don't gather up loose chunks of scrap wood. So that's it. The shelves are pretty well done other than waiting for the stain to dry and a few little touches here and there, but they look fantastic. So guys, thanks again very much for helping out on this. We're gonna have you help out lots on this series, but what do you think of the shelves so far? Perfect. Yeah, Honestly, no other word. Perfect for what we had to work with. A hundred years, you are saying earlier how like, not everything made a long time ago apparently was made better than nowadays. Right. And that's definitely true. For right, dude, they use better materials because you could even, I mean, and we're saying that because when we got the shelves, they were kind of crooked and that's the way they were built. Oh yeah. Like they, a really long time ago. still are crooked. We just made it look less crooked. <laughs> yeah. We, we fixed a lot, but we could have been here like hours and hours trying to get it perfect. But to the shelves defense, they lasted all these years and we're still using them a hundred years later. So, and that's because it's, what is it, cedar mostly? I think? Uh, it's cedar and fir. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not chipboard. Yeah, exactly. It would never have lasted. Well, let's have a look at these shelves. So the shelves now go all the way up to the ceiling. The windows are cased in. We've left the bottom portion a little bit bigger so I can put larger items or signs or big stuff as it comes in on the bottom because it's generally heavy and it can sit on the bottom. Um, we got the old, um, wall-mounted clock, which was missing its guts. Uh, bought that the other day, converted that into a little showcase and it fits just perfect in that space. And really, uh, these shelves, I mean, I'll try and get the perspective here. They are massive. They, the ceiling's in here about 10 feet and they go all the way up to the ceiling. So absolutely fantastic with all the old grain bins. And once I get some other showcases and shelves in here, it's gonna really start looking great. Hey, well guys, it looks fantastic. Um, it definitely exceeds expectations. And I think my original worry was that by blocking the windows, I'd lose out on that shelf space, but I'll do what I originally was planning on doing the first time around and putting something you know, interesting or innate in those spaces. Now this one window is now turned into my little work desk. Mm -hmm. We built that little pocketed area mm -hmm. and we recycled the old wood. Was it hard to, Cut it down and oh, not at all. Honestly, and that was the best choice too because it, you know, completely matches like the roughness of the old stuff. So that was perfect. That will flow in the. Oh yeah. The you had one challenge, and that's that there was little plugs you had to put in. There was little plugs, right? Which were cut out for the. What would you call those? Uh, for the backs of the the, the, the cabinetry. Right. Yeah, they had the slats going right, in. Right, the so slats. They, that's yeah. what I was looking for. <laughs> slats. So yeah, the hole. But that was just a simple plug. Uh, just, stick it with a small piece of wood, glue it, and uh, it actually worked out because we put a piece of wood underneath anyways, a little more support of the flimsy desk. Yeah, but it'll do a good job, I think, mm -hmm. and uh, a space to put your knees if you're sitting there and have to, you know, cut all those checks as I'm buying uh, antiques <laughs> and whatever I gotta do over there. So guys, it looks fantastic, thank you very much. So, of course, we'll be back again, and the next time you guys are helping me out, it's probably gonna be either to build the little uh, sitting area at the front. I, oh, might, right. I might have to wait until I get the other fixtures and so we know how to space it out. Right. Um, cool. But we're gonna start tearing into that other space, mm -hmm. which is a full on complete build. So you guys right. ready for that? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. That's, that's gonna be the one. That's what I'm looking forward to. Okay, great, and uh, so the folks at home know your Instagram and YouTube. 
uh, My Hands Gallery and Ushitat, and the uh, YouTube is my name, Joshua Alexander. My Instagram is Madness Photography, M A D N E Z Z Photography. It's the same with the, <laughs> damn it, that's my phone. Uh, same with my uh, Facebook as well, so M A D N E Z Z Photography. Okay, awesome. And uh, of course, you can follow us online here at YouTube or uh, Curiosity edmonton.ca or curiosity inc yeg on instagram that's the best place to find updates on what's happening new items coming in the store or on facebook you can contact us through there we'll do our very best to get back to you so thanks very much for watching this episode stay tuned for more as we start a complete rebuild of this space this is uh one part of it a big part of it but there's so much more to go and a whole other building to complete so stay tuned for those episodes and we'll see you all soon bye for now